I'm Dr. Chip Levy from the Ashna Heart and Vascular Institute, Ashna Clinical School, the University of Queensland School of Medicine here in New Orleans, Louisiana. And I'm here to discuss our paper entitled The Obesity Paradox, Cardiorespiratory Fitness and Coronary Heart Disease, which is published in the May 2012 issue of the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. I'd first like to acknowledge and congratulate the excellent efforts of our first and lead author, Dr. Paul McCauley of the Department of Human Performances and Sports Sciences, Winston-Salem State University, as well as my other co-authors from the University of South Carolina, Stanford University, and the Pennington Biomedical Research Center for their excellent contributions to this important paper. We know that overweightness and obesity have been increasing in epidemic proportions in the United States and throughout the world. And certainly, obesity adversely affects almost all of the major coronary heart disease risk factors. It raises blood pressure, worsens lipids, leads to insulin resistance, which then leads to metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes, which are also increasing in epidemic proportions. In fact, obesity increases the rate of almost all cardiovascular diseases, including coronary disease, and it's probably an independent risk factor. But despite this very strong evidence that obesity worsens the risk factors and leads to coronary heart disease, now numerous studies and even very large meta-analyses show that once cardiovascular disease becomes established, including coronary disease, it seems like the overweight and obese are actually doing better from a prognostic standpoint, and this has been termed the obesity paradox. Now, my co-authors and I have published extensively on the obesity paradox. In fact, Dr. Paul McCauley has published several papers from the Veterans Administration Stress Laboratory demonstrating this paradox in some big papers, including one in the American Journal of Medicine and one a couple of years ago in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. And my colleagues and I at Ashna Clinic in New Orleans have published on this obesity paradox in heart failure and in coronary heart disease, not just using body mass index, but also using percent body fat measurements, including a big paper last September in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. Now, other investigators, including those from the Mayo Clinic, have papers, including one by Kashish Gould in American Heart Journal a couple of years ago, and a big meta-analysis of five studies in three countries published in Jack last year, which have suggested that the obesity paradox was not present in those with high central obesity. Also, there have been papers that have suggested, including one by Kashish Gould in the American Heart Journal, uh, as well as Paul McCauley's Mayo Clinic preceding paper, that the obesity paradox was not present in those with high levels of cardiorespiratory fitness. Now, our present study has several unique features. We studied a very large cohort of 9,563 men with known or suspected coronary heart disease from the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study. And this, these data were collected by our senior author, Dr. Steve Blair, when he was working at the Cooper Clinic in Dallas, Texas. We followed these patients on average for over 13 years. And during this time, there were over 700 deaths and nearly 350 cardiovascular disease deaths. So it has quite good statistical power. And not only did we precisely measure cardiorespiratory fitness, but we also assessed adiposity of body composition by three separate mechanisms. One, the usual body mass index. Second, we assessed percent body fat by either hydrostatic weighing and or the sum of the seven skin fold method. And finally, we also assessed central obesity by measuring weight circumference at the umbilicus. Importantly, our study showed the very strong effects of cardiorespiratory fitness to predict prognosis. In fact, the men who had high levels of cardiorespiratory fitness had quite low rates of cardiovascular disease death and total mortality. And in these fit men, there did not appear to be an obesity paradox. On the other hand, in the unfit men, these, these unfit men had a higher rate of cardiovascular death and total mortality and they showed a strong obesity paradox using not only BMI, but also percent body fat and even with central obesity or waist circumference. In summary, our study had three major findings. First, that in the 
patients with high fitness, there does not seem to be an obesity paradox. And this supports previous data, the Mayo Clinic investigators, as well as Paul McCauley's paper previously in the Mayo Clinic proceedings. Second, this paper confirmed that the obesity paradox is present in coronary disease patients using both BMI and percent body fat, confirming the data that my colleagues and I at Ashna have published regarding BMI and body fat, both uh, in heart failure and in patients with coronary disease. And third, in contrast to two previous papers, uh, our current study suggests that the obesity paradox is still present even when considering central obesity. At least this seems to be the case in men with documented or suspected coronary or heart disease, at least those who had low levels of overall cardiorespiratory fitness. So in conclusion, our study demonstrates that in men with known or suspected coronary heart disease, cardiorespiratory fitness markedly alters the relationship between adiposity and subsequent mortality. If one is using adiposity to assess future mortality risk, the results may be misleading if one also doesn't consider cardiorespiratory fitness. And finally, our data also strongly support efforts to improve levels of cardiorespiratory fitness in the primary and secondary prevention of cardiovascular diseases, including coronary heart disease. Thank you. We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic Proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.